Hello there and welcome to the third in this series of studies uh, for the Nid Valley Circuit called Outrageous Grace, looking at the story of the prodigal uh, and reflecting on some passages as well from uh, the Paul's letter to the Romans. My name is Ben Clowes, I'm the Superintendent Minister of the Nid Valley Circuit. It's really good to have you with me today. Let's begin with some prayer, let's pray. Lord, we come with our doubts and our fears. We come with our hurts and our pain. We come feeling helpless, inadequate and insecure. We come with our sin and with our selfishness. We come feeling lost, anxious and alone. Lord, come and be strength, hope, peace, joy and love for us. And by your spirit, enable us to worship you as you deserve. Amen. So uh, a few uh, selected verses from Romans 4 and 5 uh, begin our readings today. Uh, so it's Romans 4, 7 to 8, and then chapter 5, verses 1 to 2 and 6 to 8. Paul writes, Blessed are those whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord will never count against them. Therefore, since we have been justified through grace, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand, and we boast in the hope of the glory of God. You see, just at the right time when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person, Someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And from Luke 15, the story of the prodigal, we have uh, very similar verses to the last um, reading that we had in our last session. Um, just an, an additional part of chapter uh, of verse 20 today. So this is Luke 15, verses 17 to 20. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am, starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. Thanks be to God for the reading of his word. Oh, you shouldn't. It's just what I've always wanted. Another pair of socks. How did you know? A lovely knitted sweater. Hmm. You really shouldn't have. No. I mean, you really shouldn't have. Gifts can be so varied. Things that we want and things we're not sure what its use is, never mind actually wanting it. Trying to sound like it's the best thing ever when actually you've already got 25 of the same thing. When it comes to Christmas and birthdays, are you a list maker? Um, I'm a list maker and my wife is a list maker because if she wasn't, um, she knows that I worry that I won't get to the things that she wants. And I actually make a list of the things she suggested as the years go on for Christmas and for birthday. It can happen with some people that they always seem to buy something that's already been given. So as a giver, are you generous or are you miserly? Giving the least you can or are you willingly without limit or are you even having to work out exactly how much you could afford in total and divide equally to the penny between people i guess we all have our limits usually financial sometimes we won't get something out of our own principles and yet we all have a limit our readings today talk of the outrageous generosity of god we need to think about the cross to understand something about the outrageous generosity of God. Outrageous as it's unlimited and to people who don't deserve it. 
Our readings show how outrageous his generosity and his grace is. Now, I wonder where the furthest place from home that you've ever been. It's interesting to ask people whose funerals I'm doing and um, where they've had as holiday destinations. Lots of British coastal towns, which uh, to many have seen better days than when we encounter them now. If I'd asked a few decades ago, we might have been shocked at Cornwall or even France. But today the world's getting smaller. We've been to Australia as a family uh, a good number of years ago now. It's a long way, a long, long way. And until you've been, you can't really imagine how far it is. I remember going to stand in the queue for the toilet on the plane, not because I needed it, but because it was something to do. The travel back from Cairns when we flew home, door to door, was 36 hours travelling. It's a long way. And you have a real sense of how far away from home that you are. In this uh, passage from Romans, we have an interesting statement. While we were still weak, while we were still in sin, still far away from God, he came to us. The key word here is still. Not while we were sorting ourselves out, not while we were getting less weak, not while we were perfect, while we were still weak. We may have turned a corner, but we're still weak. We're not right yet. The prodigal was still a long way off. He made a decision to turn back and to wait for the father. He's rehearsing his lines, isn't he? Expecting to have to search for the father. Uh, expecting to arrive with no welcome. Certainly no one watching. And yet we get the idea, don't we, that the prodigal's father is still waiting. He sees the prodigal and makes his move. The father waits for us, watching for us, looking for him. Have we made our move yet? Are we far from God needing to turn back to him? Have we stalled on our journey back and begun to wonder if we're more comfortable where we are now? If so, what does the cross say to us now then i wonder if you used to watch or maybe still watch on box sets or on one of the many uh, channels that play back old uh, bbc programs the uh, the old hit last of the summer wine it still remains the world's longest running sitcom by a country mile one of the characters an irregular one uh, particularly towards the end was um, uh, a character called eli he was as blind as a bat with thick milk bottle glasses. I remember an episode once where he was at the opticians and the other characters were waiting inside, watching Eli with his new milk bottle glasses. And then, in typical slapstick style, he walked into the doorframe, speaks to a lamppost and then gets on the back of a dustbin lorry rather than a bus. You see, he still couldn't see. Remember um, that in the series so far, all we've had is the father is still waiting and he sees the prodigal in the distance. In the modern world, it's difficult to see around the corner due to housing, but in the countryside, you can see for miles. I imagine the prodigal coming over the rise of a hill and looking down at home. What does he feel at that moment? Anxious? Happy? Then suddenly he sees someone running, his father, his arms open wide. The Greek word for the compassion that the father sees here is planchitsamai. The root of the word is the guts, the feeling of compassion in the gut. And it's the same word when Jesus had compassion for the 5,000 before he fed them. This is a visceral response. In the passages we heard from Romans, God sees all our deeds, good and bad. And even though we're very weak, he offers us the cross. The outrageous grace of God is a visceral response, open wide for each and every one of us, enabling us to see him. The outrageous bit, it doesn't matter what we've done or what we haven't done. The grace is the same. What does God see in your life? 
Do you feel guilty? Do you feel he'll never choose you? Feel he'll never forgive you? Remember the cross. Remember God's outrageous grace. Now, let me take you back to those birthday parties, not the modern sort in soft play um, as we did when my boys were small, or the themed parties that now appear all the rage. I'm talking about the parties with traffic light jelly, past the parcel, musical chairs and musical statues. Musical statues was that game where as kids we loved to dance to the music and then the music would stop and we had to stand still just as we were difficult particularly if someone's trying to make you laugh or you're in a position that's hard to hold for a long period of time i remember seeing once a poster outside a church feel far from god who moved the prodigal adds a second phrase to this feeling close to god who moved the prodigal started but the father finished. He ran. And this is beyond the social norms that have already been shattered by the sun. This, as mentioned before, a uh, passage has many shocking elements to people from a similar culture who read this for the first time today. And this is a shocking moment as the father runs. We don't see it uh, in British English. But in that culture, the slower you move, the more dignified you are. To run was unheard of. And yet here I see the father running so fast. You see, in Romans, we're reminded that we didn't do the saving. While we were still weak, Christ died. God in Christ completed the salvation story. Our lives can become very busy and think we think we're walking with God, but actually we need to constantly focus back on him, turn and walk back to his side, accept his completed salvation story. Remember the cross. Stop and see God is coming your way in his outrageous grace. This outrageous grace is freely given, open to all who will accept and believe. I spoke before about how outrageously little is required. But also note the overwhelming grace of God to our little that we offer to him. Remember, he's no longer waiting for you. Look, he's running to meet you with arms full of grace. Let us pray. Wonderful, wonderful God, we praise you for your goodness that will not be defeated and for your glory which cannot be diminished. We praise you for your majesty which shines out in the darkness of your world and for your authority which is the ultimate answer to all our concerns. We praise you for your sovereignty, which is our ultimate reason for worship, and for your love, which holds us and heals us and makes us whole. We praise you for Christ, and for the reflection in him of your goodness, your majesty, your authority and your love. We praise you for his life, death and resurrection, that demonstrated your sovereign will and your authority over all things. We praise you for the coming of the Holy Spirit, which transforms our lives, empowers our worship, calls and equips us for service. Wonderful, wonderful God, you are the Holy One. You are the one who is always in the right and does what is right. Holy, holy, holy Lord, we join with all your creation to honour your name and give praise for your glory. And we offer you all our praise through Christ our Saviour. Amen. Thank you for joining with me as we've explored uh, in these last three sessions uh, some of the outrageous grace of God. And we're going to pause this series and return to it uh, in the future as we have three more sessions to have looking at the outrageous grace of God. Thanks for joining with me. Bye for now. <laughs>